the teacher asked all the kids to go around the room one day and stand up and say what they wanted to be when they grew up. And when I come to my turn, I just said, I am a commercial fisherman. I think a lot of us are, have those deep feelings and deep love for uh, the profession. I don't call it an industry, it's a profession. It's, it's something I'm proud of doing and I try to do to the best of my ability. I think most of us do. It's an emotional thing as well as, as a way to make a living. When I started writing, it was, uh, it was kind of an accident. Something funny happened on, on deck, and, and I wrote just a little four-liner, and it kind of rhymed. Uh, I was thinking about, I probably had a hangover. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so I, I read it to my crew. A few days there, they said, hey, you going to write anything else? And so I wrote something else about something that happened on the boat. And then it was so funny here, they thought it was funny. So I read over the radio to some of the area skippers, and pretty soon they, it just kind of, more and more I started writing. But it, it wasn't, uh, it was just fooling around. It wasn't until the late 80s, after my dad and son drowned, why things were pretty black for a while. It, uh, anyway, one day, three poems came to me all at once, and uh, they were just the same kind of casual stuff it had been. But I had been more and more getting uh, upset and uh, at, the, at the press that commercial fishing was getting and commercial fishermen. I kept looking at this and saying, somebody needs to speak up for us. Somebody needs to speak up for us. One day a guy in the mirror said, well, <laughs> get to it. <laughs> People don't know who commercial fishermen really are. They don't know our emotional side, uh, our attachment to our profession. So I started trying to show the, the human side of it by writing just some of my sea stories and so on. On the West Coast, <laughs> on the West Coast, our problems are a little bit different. The federal government's been real heavy-handed in their management. We're still getting shut down piecemeal. And it seems to me like we're looking at uh, fisheries being managed, managed for politics instead of for biology. And we're going to lose it if that keeps up. The politicians have to start talking to the fishermen, believing the fishermen. The uh, draggers, the bottom fish, small, small draggers, inshore draggers, got shut down on a bunch of f different fisheries because the stocks were obviously in decline. And it wasn't the stocks at all. The canneries were dictating, the plants were dictating. They'd say, bring us in 10,000 pounds of this or 8,000 pounds of that. And so the fishermen would. That's what the market would bear at that time. National Marine Fisheries got a hold of that and said, oh, there's only, you're only bringing in this much. So, and they didn't go any further than that and immediately started restricting. The main reason that I go out on the road, and I've been on the road for quite a few years now with my poetry and stories and talking to people, is we need a public outcry.